What is up good people? Jungle Link here, hope you're doing well. If you hear some sounds of nature in the background, what's going on? I got some ducks in the mail. And apparently they can't go right outside where they belong to their duck hutch. They have to stay in a controlled environment. That controlled environment is here in my recording studio. So for the next month, as I'm recording videos, we're gonna hear some quacking and chirping and whatever ducks do apparently. So uh, cute ducks, I'm just ready for them to get outside where they belong. All right, this is a controversy you'll see pop up from time to time with XRP Ledger. It will be termed a permissioned or semi-permissioned blockchain. And you will see this not just from Fudsters, but in official paperwork. So the question was posed to David, <laughs> why? Why do, why do they call it a permissioned blockchain? Kind of irritated, and we'll look, take a look at his response. What's important to understand, every blockchain has made design decisions and they're all gonna be a little bit different depending on the problems they're trying to solve. The XRP Ledger is no different. Make sure you understand this. When you are sending a payment, the functionality of the XRP Ledger is fully permissionless. It's fully decentralized. Ripple can't stop your payments. The government can't block your payments. They will settle in a fully decentralized manner. The functionality of the XRP Ledger is not in question here. It is fully decentralized. And we look at what David Schwartz has to say. He says the following, I think it's nonsense. A lot of things about blockchain really matter, but how specifically they happen to solve the double spend problem is pretty much irrelevant. What possible effect does it have? So again, like I said, you know, payments are fully decentralized. It solves the double spend problem in a different manner than, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum or other blockchains, but solves that problem nonetheless. And it is decentralized as any other blockchain out there. Now, I think David, and he does this a lot, he's kind of glossing over you know, some of the issues here, there definitely is a difference, a difference for a purpose, but a difference nonetheless. And we see the following, unlike other consensus mechanisms like proof of work or proof of stake, which are open to anyone willing to participate, the RPCA, which is the Ripple Protocol Consensus Al Algorithm, relies on a voting process among a selected group of validators to reach consensus more effectively. The term semi-permissioned is largely attributed to the XRP ledger because of the UNL. Validators play a crucial role in confirming transactions, maintaining ledger integrity. However, not all validators have the same influence within the XRP ledger network. So you have this cluster of validators that are above the rest of them, that have different capabilities, and so it doesn't really matter for settling of transactions, but it sure matters on who gets to vote. What features come out of the XRP ledger, how this blockchain evolves over time. Not every single person that wants to participate gets to participate on the same level. Things like, are we gonna introduce and allow hooks or smart contracts or whatever features there may be, you may wanna run a validator, just like you can run a Bitcoin node and have an equal vote and you can be blocked out because you're not on that list. Is that okay? I think so. When you look at the XRP ledger, it is built for security, speed, and fast finality, and that's what it delivers. And I don't think changing that would do anything other than harm it for what it's trying to do. So when you invest in XRP ledger, you understand that, you accept that, because what you get from that is a world-class blockchain at this specific capability. It's secure, it's fast, and it has world-class finality. You know, we can look at Solana, high throughput, even faster than XRP, but it's much slower on the finality. You have something like Avalanche. It has near instant finality, but more expensive, uh, you know, payments. And so, you know, it's all about what problems are you trying to solve? What are your capabilities? And that's why the XRP Ledger is designed as it is. And I think it fits fine with the use cases that it's built for. Going forward, uh, you know, I think if you're gonna have uh, payment networks built on top of this, if you're gonna have, you know, banks and institutions and governments, you know, using this blockchain for very important purposes, well, this might be a design feature you like. So the yahoos out here can't go, well, you know what? We'd rather take the XRP ledger in a different way and have you know maybe EVM on the on the main chain because we can play games on it and it'd be great for that and you know you could see the masses deciding to do something different with this blockchain that may hurt its main core functionality today. Again, I think it's appropriate for the XRP ledger, 
may not be for other blockchains. Understand this, accept it, and again, if we wanted it differently, we could fork it and go on our own way. I've went over this a lot of different times, but I think it just comes down to this is a sensible setup for what this blockchain sets out to solve, and it does it very well. Let me know down below what you think. Also, I put up a, a, an article that's pretty interesting. It's about Goldman Sachs. They've been kind of anti-crypto. Well, now they're jumping in, and they added uh, $415 million worth of Bitcoin. Pretty big start here, so you can read through that article, watch the video from CNBC TV. You might find that interesting. As you see more people now admitting this crypto revolution is happening and they're starting to jump in in a pretty significant manner. Let me know what you think down below. As always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Link.